Hello there. Uh, this is my recap video for Gen Con 2023 of what I came home with or my Gen Con haul. I did this last year. People said they liked it. And so I thought I would do it again. Just kind of going over here what I came home with from Gen Con. Last year, I did just kind of an order of how I acquired these things and why I acquired these things. So I thought I'd do the same thing. So Without further ado, here's what I came home with. So the first thing I purchased, I think, was uh, there's also art at Gen Con. And I really like this piece of art. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a matching set of a Hoth scene from Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. And I really like this artist who does this kind of Japanese style. Is I don't remember his name, but it's Okiyu Pop. And so it, he does like these like nerdy kind of things, but in this Japanese style. So this is uh, Boba Fett here uh, with his Han Solo on the wall. So I like this. And so this will be going on my wall here shortly. So I think I got that on Thursday or Friday, possibly. And then on Friday, I made a purchase of my first game purchase was this game right here, Northguard. Uh, I got Northguard the game last year, and I really like it. I think it was my favorite game that I purchased from Gen Con uh, last year. And this is an expansion for that game, a little small expansion that gives player powers. They're called the War Chiefs. So I really like Northguard, and I'm excited this was there. It might be a little bit harder to find later, so that's why I picked it up at Gen Con. This thing, it's in my way, so I'm going to do it now. I got this on Sunday, but this is just a play mat for a game that I got a couple Gen Cons ago called Furnace, which I really like. And so it's kind of nerdy, but uh, play mats are really nice to play on, and the cards slide across so nicely, and I play this game quite a bit. And it was only 12 bucks for this little play mat, so I decided I would pick it up. So that is the Furnace play mat. So that was that. Uh, on Friday evening, we did an event with Alderac Entertainment Group, or AEG. And that's where these two games came from. One is called Number Drop. It's like a tetris -y game that also is kind of like a Sudoku kind of thing. And it is kind of makes your brain hurt a little bit, trying to make all these numbers match together and trying to eliminate little sections and um, tie things together to get points. It was pretty good. I don't think I would have purchased this if I wouldn't have been given it, but it's good. So what we do on this uh, this AEG event is, this is the third year that I've done it, is it's a little bit more of an expensive event. I think it's $38 and it's then it's four hours and they teach you games and then you walk out with games. And so I walked out with actually three games, only two are pictured here because the other one is Tiny Towns, which they already actually have. And so I will find a home for that. Um, but then they also taught us Number Drop, and then this game called Waffle Time, which is pretty cute. It's you're putting together uh, waffles and fruit um, on your waffles and syrup and everything. It's kind of cute. I'll have to give this another play. I was not a huge fan of it at the teach, but it was actually almost too quick. I like quick games, but this one, I don't know. Waffle Time. It was okay. But I don't think I would have purchased it, but again... They taught it and gave it to us, and so I said, thank you. Uh, so, so that is that. So that is what I have there. Um, and then on Friday, I spent a lot of time, my new favorite board, com board game company is uh, Hachette. And, you know, board game companies, they're kind of like, you know, when you watch a movie and it's like, there's like five studios that go by. This movie is comes from this studio and this studio and this studio. That's kind of what board game games are like as well, is there's uh, a bunch of different studios that are brought together or companies. But this Hachette company was great, and I spent like two or three hours just in their booth demoing and playing their games. And I just, they're, they're so great. I, I was joking. I said, I want to buy one of everything. I didn't actually, but I did make several pur purchases. I bought three in their booth. Now, some of these games I know that I can get later, and so I want to give a shout out to Mission Board Games and Tabletop Games. Those are two companies that we have here in Kansas City, and they're both great. 
And so I encourage you to check out those game companies. I, I thought about waiting until I got back and then going to support our local game stores. However, it did feel a little bit disingenuous for me to borrow the time of their demoers for all this time and then go buy it somewhere else. And certainly to go like place like Amazon or something, I didn't want to do that. Um, but, uh, but if these look interesting to you, I might encourage you to go check out Mission Board Games or Tabletop Games. I'm not getting like commission or anything. I just, I really like them and I'm trying to support them uh, since I didn't necessarily do that here. But let me first talk about Raua. So Raua and the, the, in the footsteps of Darwin, they are of similar ilk. They are both about 30 minutes to 45 minutes with their short and punchy. They're interesting decisions that you make throughout the, the game. Raua is just 12 turns with four scoring things in between the three rounds of four. Uh, plays pretty quick. It's a little drafting game. So a drafting game means uh, you take cards, you pick one and pass the rest. In this game, you have four cards on your left and on your right. And you look at these four cards, you pick one and put the other three back. And then you look on this side you look at the three cards that are now there because your neighbor did the same thing at the same time. And now I'm going to pick one of those cards and put the other two cards back. And now I'm going back to this one. There's two cards left. I'm going to pick one and put the other one out of the game. Uh, and so it's all simultaneous. So it goes really fast. You're thinking about what your neighbor wants to pick and as well as what is good for you. I played a game of it last night and uh, there were moments as like, I don't really need this card, but I don't really want this person to have it. So I'm going to take this card. It's going to give me some benefits, but those are the ways you have to think. And just really clever way those all go about. So I've played that a couple times since I purchased the game. And The Footsteps of Darwin oh, this is, a heavy one, um, is also it's a beautiful game. You're going and collecting different animals and putting them in different slots on your board. Also short, punchy game. I think it's like 12 rounds as well. Um, a little bit similar, but it's not a drafting. You're picking things out of a central board. Um, so it's a really nice and beautiful game in the footsteps of Darwin. So that's from that company, as well as this game. Now, here is a find that I had at, at Gen Con. I've never heard of this game. It's called, I can't even remember, it's CDSK. And it is a party game, a trivia game. I've got a good friend, Sarah Book, and she said, go shop for Sarah games. And so Sarah, this is a Sarah game. It'll be, it's very, very simple. It's possibly the best party game I've ever seen because look at this. I can, I, I, this thing flops out and now look, you've got the game board. Okay. So you got the game board. And then what you do is I'll pick out this card here, which is one of the categories. And the question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well do you know volcanoes? And then the person or the team says, I know very little, so I will say 3. And then I read on this card the question that is, a, is for 3. So let's say you chose 3. This is, what do you call the molten rock that spews out of a volcano during an eruption? That's a 3-level three, a three question. It's lava. So if you get the question right, you get to move three points on three spots on the board. And so you kind of call your shot, like how confident do you feel about that? So the number 10 question is like, name the two minerals that are prevalent in basalt. I don't got that one. I would not say 10 for a volcano. Um, <laughs> I can't even read these words. But anyway, great little party game. Got a ton of cards in here. Different categories, really fun, CDSK, and I wasn't sure if I could find that when I got back to the game store. But if it's there, you're looking for a good party game, this one's good. Uh, so that was that company. It was great. Um, speaking of party games, on Sunday, I purchased Everything Ever. It's not open yet, but this is um, another great party game. Sarah, another one for you. Uh... And then what that, that game that you know you, you play is uh, every animal sound. And then like you go back and forth until someone can't do it. Or every um, bean. And you go back and forth until you can't name it. There's a little bit more to the game than that, but that's the basic premise. That game you've probably played many times before is you keep going back and forth naming things until one person runs out. So that's everything ever. 
fun little party game. I think it'll get quite a bit of play. And that's a principle that I do use quite a bit when I'm looking at buying games is the game might look great, but am I going to have anybody to play it with? And I don't really play solo games. A lot of people do. I really don't. So I'm always looking for these games that not only look good for me, but I think that other people will enjoy them. So I think lots of people will enjoy Everything Ever and CDSK. So that's why I got those. Uh, a couple more here. I got Catherine, the Cities of the Sarsarina, which is a semi-complex game, but also very short. Uh, so, I mean, as far as uh, strategy gamers go, 30 to 45 minutes, it says on the box. I'd probably say 45 minutes. Pretty quick, though. You play several rounds, and you play these cards, and you're trying to put your little markers in different areas. Um, I think it was Daniel Connors that introduced me to this game, and I really liked it. It was on a good sale. It was 30 bucks at their booth, which is, as far as Gen Con prices go, for a pretty uh, big game, it seemed good. It was like the MSRP was like 60 or something, or maybe 50 but seemed like a good deal, so I said, all right, I'll pick it up. I've played it, I like it, and I now I have it, so that's good. I do try to watch for games that I, um, I've played before. I try not to buy a whole lot of games I've never played, um, but I make some exceptions. This is one of them. This is the last purchase, well, second to last purchase. I think every, everything ever I got at the very last minute, but Lords of Va'ala, Dra Dragon Bond. This is my discovery of the con, and this might be a bust, and it might be great. Um, but this, I, I went to Gen Con saying, I want to get some sort of like big nerdy game. There's all these huge games there. Um, and I want to get one of, those, one of those that has like dragons and stuff. But they always seem like they're too complicated. And they're, you really have to devote a lot of time to them and learn all the rules and everything. And I wanted to find a company that I couldn't find. This is probably something that you cannot find at your local game stores because uh, it's not in a whole lot of distribution yet but um, it's beautiful it's got these huge miniatures and it plays they say in 60 minutes now I have not played this one I s learned a little bit about the rules but it's a pretty simple programming card game like I put out my cards that I want to play and then you play them in the order that they were played of the four players or however many people that are playing there are expansions that are coming out expansions that are coming out that will expand it to six or even eight players and I'm always looking for games that play a big player count. Um, all of these games play, at least the ones I purchased, play five or more players and five is pretty much my minimum because I'm often trying to find a game that plays five players. This one currently plays four but they say that the expansions are coming out next year that will expand it. But Anyway, this was a chance I took. I wanted to support this company. It looked like a pretty good game, and so we'll see. It might be a bust, but took a chance, and it was a reasonable price for the game. Also came with a little promo. That's one of the things that you can discover at Gen Con. I got a promo pack for everything ever and some other things, so that's an advantage to going to Gen Con. So that's a little tour of what I came home with this year at Gen Con. Hopefully that was interesting to you. If not, well, there's plenty of other videos to watch on Facebook or YouTube or whatever. So carry on. Have a great evening.